around the district positions versus the pro tem deputy mayor and the other changes that were in there? Is it okay if we clear that up first and then we just jump into discussion? Can I make one clear first? Yep, because this is my fault. Uh, something that uh, former Mayor Sue Lund said was incorrect information coming from me, and I apologize that, that the item about um, the mayor being able to take over the police department is something that the state requires, and I wasn't aware of that. It's been there since we were both mayors, too. So that was misinformation that I started to pass on, and I, I talked to Rob and got corrected, and I thought I told everybody who heard that that I was wrong. So that wasn't your fault, too. That was my fault. I, I, I honestly can't believe that the state... I know it is a yes. word thing, but it is state law. Because that's scary. It is scary. That was one piece of another piece is just that the deputy mayor pro tem was brought up by staff. That was not a change that I requested in any way. Um, it was just a part. Of it. it was recommended by staff due to the fact that the majority of other cities that I researched call that position the deputy mayor position, and it seemed to more accurately reflect the duties that the mayor pro tem has here. Um, but really, it's, functionally, it's no different. It's just a title change. Thank you. Well, I guess we've already done public comment for this, but is anybody in the room that has not made comment or has not had their letter read and need to comment or on the record uh, like to speak? Mr. Lamont? Peter Lamont, I try it. I looked up the RCW 35 on this topic. And when I saw the uh, mayor pro tem, deputy mayor, I think there were three different names that were possible in that position. And it's been this way for years, and I can say that I never had any burning desire to have it changed to something else. So I don't, I don't see why we're wasting one dollar of our time and, and effort on this. So, but thank you. Anybody else in the room? Please. speak on behalf of my neighbors in that this is not democracy. It looks to most of us like a power grab. And so vote this down. And of course, uh, Elizabeth Cameron did mention that the city of Pasco and Yakima had to deal with actually changing back after they had done pretty much the same thing. So did we actually even think about how the taxpayers would have to foot the bill for legal costs if this had to go to court? Thank you. Anybody else in the room? Seeing none, I'll go to online. Anybody online like to comment? Seeing none, I'll open up for discussion. I'm going to go ahead and start because I have, I have some prepared things and I'll try to make it, I've truncated to make it shorter because so much has been said already. I don't want to repeat things. Um, but I do have a statement I don't have to read from the, uh, the uh, director of the Democratic Party who strongly supports not changing our districts, as well as somebody named Anthony Mixer, who is the representative, let me see if I can see what his position is here. Uh, he represents, I think, Young Republicans. Uh, he's the chairman of the Washington State Young Republican Government Affairs Committee. Uh, and he also sent a, a text to me strongly opposing changing our districts. I want to say that quickly, instead of reading all that. Uh, there's one thing I want to read though briefly. I contacted the MSRC, which is the Municipal Research and Service Center. It's a nonprofit that works for locals, local governments providing legal and, and policy guidance on any topic they choose. And I just want to highlight a couple things because they said a lot of nerdy things about how laws get passed and how lawsuits happen with this kind of thing. But a couple things I highlighted, I think it was important for the public to hear from this nonprofit, which does give us a lot of advice about what, how we run our cities and what our policies might be. Uh, the trend over time has been toward the creation of districts, often a hybrid system with a mix of wards, districts, and at large positions, in part to address the inequities in minority representation at the local level. Yakima and Pasco 
were claimed to have election systems that violated either federal voting rights, rights act, the VRA, or the relatively new 2018 Washington Voting Rights Act, or both. During pending litigation, different districts were developed based on elections data and demographic data that are believed not to contribute to voting disparities as such as polarized voting or vote dilution in a matter that is adverse to protected class of voters. So they just kind of stated that it can be seen as discrimination as a way of opening yourself up from discrimination. So I thought that's a good uh, reference because we do communicate with the MSRC and use them as uh, information to protect us. The other thing I want to say uh, is I have no uh, malice or any kind of bad intent for any counselors that aren't here tonight. I fully understand things that happen when people can't come. But I want to tell you something. Um, I'm in my ninth year at city council. I have not missed one city council meeting in nine years. I have not missed one workshop in nine years. And the reason I'm saying that, that was a lot of work. I have worked with my family when we have family issues, family reunions, family gatherings, family different things that happen, and they work with me to make sure that I can be here because they understood my commitment to the city. I understand if a counselor is sick or there's a death in the family, something like that, of course you need to not be here. I also have own a business, and once a year my business has a very important conference, which usually lasts four or five days, and if it last, if it went on the Tuesdays from city council, I did not go. I put my city before my business and my family to do this. And I think it's important that we don't um, change once in a while who's here and who votes, because it's important for counselors to know you may miss, miss something if you're not here. You may miss an important vote, and you'll be here, if, like me, if you don't, you want to be here for every vote. So that's why I said that. It's, and if anybody chooses not to be here, that's their right and their choice, and I'm not, I'm not uh, disparaging anybody from not being here, but it's important for me. I've been committed to this for so many years, you know, I wanted to be here for this. And I think everything else has pretty much been said by the public, so um, I think that's all I have to say. So thank you all for coming here and um, all the information you have given me in exchange, and it's wonderful to see the public get involved and respect their democracy and understand how vitally important this is. So thank you. Can I request that we actually put the pull the district map up so everybody can see, so everybody has good visuals about what we're talking about as we get into this project? Um, and some of our counselors that are not here, I'm just gonna put this out there right now, that even though you weren't disparaging there, it did feel disparaging for people who do not have the same leeway that you do. Uh, as a business owner, being able to not be present for people who work, like an officer who has had a conference for her job that she does not own and cannot control. So I would like to clarify that they are not choosing necessarily to not be in attendance for these meetings. Sometimes it is inaccessible. As we talk about people who have economic disparity and cannot do those things, sometimes it's those things as well. So it's not just deaths in the family and those things. I own my own business and I have more of a way to be able to uh, attend these things but I still sometimes have to take care of my employees and go take care of the business. So I just want to put that out there. Yeah, I apologize for any, any um, disparity or any, any ill feelings about that. I certainly do want to direct it to counselors or at me and at what I think this job is, is the way I was trying to phrase that. But I apologize. Okay, so just for everybody here as we're looking at this map, um, can we just talk? let her know which one is which. My precinct is uh, the green, or my district, sorry, my precinct is made up of three, my district made up of three precincts, but I am the northeast corner and east side and send, like north central of uh, the community. Uh, I'll jump in next. I'm the pink guy, um, so my uh, district four is separated by the Shavos River, you can see there on the north side, it's um, Forge Prairie, and then across the river, it's um, the base of Cooks Hill, once you cross the river on Mama Street Bridge, and hang right, um, Scammon Creek all the way through there, up to the, about the point that you get to that first curve on um, Cooks Hill. Um, so that's the district that I represent. I'm the blue guy, 
So mostly the Edison District, a little bit into the outlet malls, uh, South College area, and a little bit south there, Kennedy Square Echo down here on the bottom of the floor. Mm -hmm. Military impact. Yeah, thank you. Um, yep. And then uh, Council Hallhauser, who's not here, represents the yellow. So hers starts on the north side right there in the south side of the Edison District and a portion of that down through downtown and then all the way down to the south borders of our city there uh, and over to the highway and just south of Council Arbos. So just, just so everybody's aware of what we're talking about, um, we've gotten a lot of talk about neighborhoods specifically. Um, and so I wanted everybody to know what the neighborhoods were that we are representing. I'll jump in real quick and I'll make mine brief with the hour getting late. Uh, I'll just reiterate what I had mentioned earlier. Um, being the pink guy and uh, being voted in by the constituents that um, are, are populating that area, um, the dozens of comments and responses that I got were not only overwhelmingly uh, on one side, but unanimously um, not in favor of passing this ordinance, and so um, being a voice of the people, being elected by uh, those constituents, um, I feel it is uh, my job and I'm compelled to uh, honor their voices and collectively um, bring them down into one voice and one vote, so I will not be supporting this this evening. Similarly, I solicited a lot of comment on my um, Facebook page that I created to interact with the public on council. The vast majority of everybody there was against the idea of taking away districts. Only one person that I saw said, go for it. That was the only positive, you know, that you could say for the change. So seeing that, meeting with people person to person and speaking about their concerns, um, hearing the public comment tonight as well, it seems to be very overwhelming toward one position, which is kind of interesting because I feel differently personally, but I am also here to represent the public. At this time, I'm really torn, but listening to everybody speak, I, I'm not sure this is worth going forward with at this point. So, One other thing I would like to recognize, um, it was mentioned several times, and I have notated it on my the notes that I was taking. Um, the comment was made um, over and over, put it to a vote of the people, um, and that was that was heard. Uh, but my biggest concern with that is it comes with a price tag and a pretty hefty one. And knowing the constraints that we have on our budgets, uh, I am I am glad that we're dealing with this here, here now and hopefully putting it to rest and moving on. Um, I, I definitely would not support putting it to a vote of the people at this point in time. If we get this resolved, uh, mainly because it carries a hefty price tag, and I don't want to go to the public and say, okay, we're, we're going to take $30,000 worth of taxpayer dollars just to listen to you or to have you vote and reiterate what you have already told us that um, you wish uh, again in, um, in complete um, unanimity, unanimity for the most part. Well, um, listening to what everybody that uh, took the time to come here and the people who were, who were talking to me and telling me that they did not support these, and I am here representing uh, my community, so um, I will say I'm not in support of this either. And I don't think we should just put it into a vote. I think it's, if it's been working until now, I think that's how we should be. Um, and. I mean, when I got here, the house was full, so that means something. Um, and again, I'm not against to uh, try new things, but if it, there's something that has been working, you just, you just keep everything as it is. All right, well, sounds like that's about it. So let's uh, I'll accept a motion if anybody has something else to say. I move to disapprove of changing getting rid of districts in favor of all at large positions. Will you address the pro tem deputy mayor situation as well, Chris? There's a motion. Um, it would be best to either do a motion to amend the ordinance and then we can bring it back at the next meeting as amended or just to completely go down the ordinance altogether. 
quote, faith. Uh, I'm wondering, in your opinion, would it be a good idea to discuss the other part of this, what the positions are, what the changes are, because I don't think that's going to be discussed in the public either about why did the name change and why the housekeeping things. Can you separate it out, just vote on one of it and maybe continue the discussion in the other part? Um, my motion. Yeah, you can vote on approving that part or disapproving that part separately. And then if you want. Okay. Well, then my motion will only include the districts and we'll separate that other part. And somebody wants to make a motion on the other part. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Passes 4 1. Substantial changes to what uh, the council does or what the deputy mayor would do, or the mayor that we don't currently have. There's no nope. substantial changes to how they're elected or how we're elected, or no. Nope. It just repeats what state section says, which is what we already have now. We don't have anything now, so it's so different the state from what we have in our policy procedure right now. Uh, no. So after the details, if you'd like to make a motion, and we would, or we can continue. If not, we'll move on. Okay, so I'll, 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 I'll make a motion to, uh, do you want to discuss with? Oh, okay. Uh, good, you'd like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the changes, the housekeeping changes for the policy and procedure of how <laughs> get me to how city councils. I'll second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 5 0. Uh, item 6F, consideration of secondary ordinance 2546 to adopt the Washington State Department of Transportation 2024 standard specifications for road bridge and municipal construction. There's no change in 